Hi everyone, I'm Alex Cunningham, and it is my honor to welcome you to Season 7 of the National Ninja League. Season 7 already? Where's the time gone? Even amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, we were very pleased to welcome so many of you to NNL competitions in Season 6. We held over 150 competitions that brought in over a million dollars of revenue to our facilities. Not only did over 95% of our facilities survive the pandemic, we actually grew in facility number. And we capped it off with welcoming 900 athletes over eight days at our scaled back championship event, which still featured some incredible moments. Now, many of you are already familiar with some of the changes that we've made, as we've outlined in our season seven welcome letter. If you haven't seen it yet, I strongly encourage you to take a look in the description below. But we wanted to use this video to give a little bit more information and a little bit more background into some of the changes that we've made starting with our Season 7 calendar. In Season 6, we introduced regional championships, taking the large athlete base that we have and whittling it down to a smaller, more manageable field size in the COVID era, if you will. But in Season 7, we're returning to the Convention Center style setting and also keeping regionals, a best of both worlds, if you will. We already have over 60 competitions on the schedule, spanning every one of our nine regions. We anticipate adding many more to the schedule in the months to come, so stay tuned to our website and social media feeds. Competitions start this weekend and run through February 6th, with regional championships on the weekends of February 12th and 19th. We're working on some new and exciting things for the 2022 NNL World Championship, and we're almost ready to announce them. But in the meantime, keep your schedule open for early April 2022. After Worlds, we polled World Championship attendees and non-attendees alike to see their thoughts on the regional championships that we instituted for Season 6. Last season, regional championships were a necessity, and surprisingly, many of you preferred this format over qualifying directly to the World Championship. This season, we'll be able to return to the Convention Center-style settings like Hartford and Greensboro of seasons past, but we've identified that with qualifying methods of those seasons, we might actually have too many athletes to qualify to give everyone the time on the course that they deserve. So we hope that this new regional championship format works for everyone, providing an exciting intermediate competition between traditional qualifiers and the World Championship, while still preserving what makes the World Championship so special. Here's how it works. In each division, age and gender, we'll take 35% of all athletes that have competed across the season per region to the World Championship, with a minimum of 16 and a maximum of 40. These numbers are determined by the number of unique athletes that compete in at least one competition in that region, even if they competed in other regions or live in a different region. So for instance, if across the entire season there are 100 unique mature kids male athletes that compete in the Northeast region, then 35 spots would be available at the Northeast Regional Championship. However, if they have 200 unique mature kids male athletes, they would hit the maximum of 40. Athletes can qualify for multiple regional championships, but they can only compete in one regional championship, choosing from the ones that they qualified for. Athletes are not required to compete in their home region's regional championship. Declined qualification spots will bump down to the next available athlete. Additionally, we'll be taking the top three in points in each division and region straight to the world championship. Already one of the things many of you have been discussing is the women's adjustments that we're introducing this season. At the NNL, our number one priority is having consistent positive competition experiences for all athletes, both male and female. As of season six, course designers were allowed to adjust trampoline heights and time limits for women, the latter of which we piloted at the World Championship in the Elite Division to positive reception. We've been partnering with the Ninja Babes, who led a series of in-depth seminars at Worlds, one of which you can watch on YouTube for more information, on how to better service the women in our community. We've come to the conclusion to simply strike the adjustment restrictions from our rulebook. Effective in Season 7, course designers will be allowed to modify any obstacle for female athletes in any division. This includes completely substituting whole obstacles. 
We are excited to see what course designers do with this change, and we look forward to continuing our research with Ninja Babes to provide the best possible experience to our female athletes. By popular demand, this year we'll be partnering with Safe Sport for our abuse training. The coaching certification is the NNL's way of preventing abuse from taking hold in our sport. If you completed the coaching certification last season, your background check and abuse training are still good for this season, but you'll be required to complete a condensed refresher course about NNL rules and regulations. This refresher course will cost only $5. Actually, now would be a good time to go over some of the rule changes that we're making this season. It's sort of patch notes, if you will, for the technologically inclined. Here's a lightning round of some of the things we're introducing this season. Most of our hallmark rules are back, like giving athletes freedom to complete obstacles how they choose, the three points of clearing an obstacle, and yes, even the elite division. But we're always updating our rulebook to handle situations as they arise, so we've made the following updates. Elite athletes will join all other divisions in finishing the course after they fall. As always, athletes will be scored up until their first fall. Additionally, we'll now be qualifying the top three elite athletes to the regional championship instead of only two. Athletes that fail to complete an obstacle will no longer be eligible to score points towards the national standings. This means that if there are fewer than 10 people in a division, you must complete at least one obstacle to accrue points. We've clarified that athletes must start each obstacle on the designated starting platform, and starting elsewhere or interacting with any other obstacle on the path from the finish platform of one obstacle to the start platform of another will result in a disqualification. Of course, linked obstacles are still acceptable. We've patched a rule allowing athletes unlimited false starts. Now, athletes will be disqualified on their third false start. We do not expect this to be an issue, as to our knowledge, no one has ever had three false starts in an NNL competition, but it prevents athletes from abusing this rule. Canadian Ninjas, you've asked and we've answered. We're so proud to announce a new partnership with the Canadian Ninja League, opening the door for many more opportunities for you all to compete in the sport of ninja. One of the benefits of this partnership is that Canadian athletes will have the opportunity to qualify for the NNL World Championship at select CNL competitions. We'll have much more information on how this works, along with full details about our partnership in the near future. We're very excited about this partnership not only for both of our leagues, but for the athletes that now have expanded opportunities to participate in and grow the sport we all love. Finally, I'd like to give you a little bit more details about our Gauntlet Pro Obstacle Challenge. As you know, we built an epic outdoor obstacle course in the fields of New Jersey, and we cannot wait for you all to see the footage. Our first event in June was a rousing success, and the closed qualifier and Pro Obstacle Challenge were filmed by a professional crew in front of a live spectator audience. We're in the process of professionally editing this together as a pilot episode for a full Gauntlet series, and we can't wait for all of you to watch what went down. I don't want to spoil anything, but some of these races will blow your mind, including something I've never seen in a ninja competition before. We hope this pilot episode will get you excited for the next Gauntlet event in 2022, and we're already working on ways to expand the Gauntlet experience. We thank you for your continued support of the National Ninja League, and I'm confident this is going to be our best season yet. It's incredible to think about the many strides we've taken in the past six years, from an adults-only league with about a dozen facilities, to a league with thousands of youth and adult athletes from around the world, over a hundred facilities, six world championships, two sold-out convention centers, nearly a hundred thousand course runs, and a massive course built outside over water. That does it for our Season 7 launch video. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I personally will be answering most of them. Or send us an email to info at nationalninja.com. We can't wait to see you back in competition very soon as we continue to write our stories on the course.